Today I want to talk about Bitcoin and why I put my money in there for the next 10-20 years and why there's one reason that I think people are not discussing when it comes to Bitcoin. You probably hear all the deflationary asset and decentralized cliches, but I want to discuss one thing in this video that I feel nobody is discussing when I go on the news or YouTube or just mainstream media. And so without further ado, let's dive straight into it, which is why I'm investing into Bitcoin for the next 10 20 years so this one thing that I've been looking at is that very small countries who maybe are against the US or maybe just have no relationship with the US they all are pegged against the reserve currency of the world which is the US dollars but as we've seen with the war now with Russia Russia has its reserve currency in euro and US dollars and now it pretty much got frozen completely so countries like Russia don't have a lot of choice can you imagine Imagine a smaller country like for instance Venezuela what do they do so let's talk first about let's say Russia Russia has two choices right now and there's a video that went viral by Ray Dalio about the changing world order it says that China is going to become the new uh, world currency and with that become the most dominant force uh, in the world and beating the US because the US technically is on a downtrend I don't really believe that because the currency of China right now isn't there yet. Maybe in 10, 20 years it will be. But one of the downsides for Russia would be that if China would become the world currency and the reserve currency for them, that means they would have to switch over all of their dollars and euros to that. Now again, not a problem, except when China's army becomes more powerful than Russia's army. So now it's not going to be a good experience because Technically, they're going to be put in the same position that they were now with the US and Europe. And so suddenly this reserve currency for smaller countries than the most dominant country is not a good deal. So what are the alternatives? Well, in that video, Ray Dalio describes what has happened in the past and kind of draws the line with that to the future. However, what nobody seems to be discussing is that in the last 10, 15, not even 20 years, a new currency has developed that is fully decentralized. And that's obviously the cliche that everybody hears about. But what does decentralized mean for countries? Well, first of all, it means that nobody can control that currency, which means that if you put your money in it, eventually when it of course stabilizes and becomes less volatile, uh, people have less control over that. Or not specifically people, countries have less control. And so when you have a choice between putting your reserve currency in kind of allies, people you're friends with right now, but in 50 years you might not be friends with, or you're just putting it in a decentralized currency, whether it's Bitcoin or it could be something else, but Bitcoin seems to be right now kind of the best option and the winner that will come forth out of this you know, whole blockchain crypto uh, revolution. So if you're putting your money in something like that, it seems like that could be a much better answer where countries would not be controlled. Now, there is the argument that Russia has so much money that the infrastructure would literally not cope on the blockchain. But remember what I said at the beginning, because Russia is not the only country in the world. There's like 200 plus. I think in the UN there's like 192, but there's 200 plus in total. And so when you have these smaller countries, and we already have one use case where this is happening, and that is the country that I mentioned in the beginning, which is Venezuela, they are slowly realizing that their currency isn't worth much. And so the population is switching over to crypto because it's less volatile than their own currency. And so for smaller countries that cannot operate in the reserve currency of the world, or maybe for political reasons don't want to operate, it seems like that the cryptocurrency revolution or the blockchain in general with very good stable coins kind of could be potentially a good solution for those countries. If you have one country, that means that eventually you'll have a second one and eventually you'll have four. 8, 12, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, and that means that because those are countries that have much more money, more money is going to get pumped into the ecosystem, which means that over a long term, outside of the cliches where you have decentralized and of course um, it's a deflationary asset, so inflation isn't going to affect it too much, then eventually over a span of 10 years, when you zoom out of those graphs and you kind of zoom away from the volatility that you experience over a span of maybe two two to four years, and then you look at the graph over a span of 10 years, you start realizing that 
crypto hasn't really hit its potential yet. It kind of hit the ground running with consumers and it's starting to hit the ground with businesses. But the next part will be countries. And when that hits, I think, in my opinion, of course, this could be the next thing that will get it 10x, 20x, maybe 100x. You never know. So that's kind of my interpretation and how I see it, why I keep my money in crypto as well, why I think it's the future. Of course, de-risking myself, focusing on other things as well. But I think there could be a good future and it's the reason why kind of I pulled out most of my stocks and started focusing more on crypto in the last couple of years um, with benefits, of course. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.